So I think it's very hard for us to imagine that something as simple as a sore throat could be deadly. But 100 years ago, that was the case. What we think of now as relatively harmless bacterial infections could kill people. But luckily these days we have antibiotics and they're fantastic. You know, they've completely revolutionized the way we approach modern healthcare. But there's one problem with them and it's actually a relatively big one. And it's that bacteria can actually evolve resistance to these antibiotics. And because of our largely careless overuse, we now have a situation where people get bacterial infections that we can actually no longer treat because the bacteria are resistant. So what are scientists trying to do to solve this problem? Well, one strategy has been to take a leap back in time to just before antibiotics were discovered. In 1915, a British bacteriologist called Frederick Twort discovered that viruses could actually kill bacteria. And this idea was seized upon by researchers at the time. And they developed this idea called bacteriophage therapy. So using these viruses called bacteriophage, or just phage for short, to kill bacterial infections. And this was pioneered largely by a scientist from the Republic of Georgia, George Oliva. And he would actually successfully cure infections using these phages. And the way this would work is you'd go down to the sewer, get a lot of this kind of black brown sludge teeming with bacteria and also full of these phages, isolate the phages and use that to create a treatment and to kill these bacteria. But then antibiotics came along and bacteriophage therapy was largely forgotten about. Although that's not quite the case because when antibiotics were first being rolled out, so in the 1940s during World War II, they were actually extremely expensive to make. And so in countries like the former Soviet Union, scientists and doctors kept on using bacteriophage to treat these bacterial infections. And so actually you can go to the Republic of Georgia today and go to a pharmacy and actually get a vial of these bacteriophages to treat whatever is ailing you. So the technology has definitely moved on a bit since our time of going down to the sewer. And these bacteriophages are actually pretty neat because you can use them to specifically target that bacteria that's killing you. And that used to be a problem because we didn't actually know the bacteria that's causing the disease. But these days we have really powerful diagnostic tools. So we can actually find the bacteriophage to target a specific bacteria. We can view this as an improvement over current antibiotic treatments which tend to kill all of our bacteria, even the good ones. So why can't I just go down to the hospital at the moment and get some of these bacteriophage? I mean, they sound great, right? Well, one of the concerns is these are living, evolving organisms. And so we don't actually know what will happen if we put this in a human. And for the sci-fi and horror aficionados out there, a pretty common plot line involves a scientist injecting a patient with some virus, and the next thing you know, a zombie's running riot feasting on human brains. And so that's where evolutionary biologists like myself come in, because we want to ask these types of questions. You know, can zombies evolve if we start treating people with phage? So this seems pretty unlikely. But more realistically, we want to know how easy is it for these bacteriophage to evolve and start infecting our good bacteria? Or equally as important, you know, can these bacteria evolve resistance to these phage? So what does the future then hold for bacteriophage therapy? Well, I'm not sure it'll ever be as commonly used as antibiotics, but it could represent a really important last line of defense to use to treat these types of antibiotic-resistant infections. And that's what's happening right now in clinical trials. We're using this very old idea to treat this relatively modern problem.